It was a late Saturday afternoon on the 31st of July 2021 when I sat in the casualty ward of a South African hospital, gasping for breath with a collapsed lung from COVID. I was literally dying and I knew it. I battled to control the overwhelming urge to panic as I knew if I didn't close my eyes and control my breathing, I would surely pass out and it would be over. Psalm 23 was all I could think of. The Lord is my shepherd. I spoke it inside over and over again. I was all over the place, hardly in order, but focusing on the leading by still waters, and that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil. Psalm 23 is a very well-known psalm, very often used at funerals, but there's something beautiful, comforting, reassuring about Psalm 23. And it's fine to use at funerals, as it surely does hold the promise of eternity with God, as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. However, There is so much more in it that we sometimes miss through ignorant repetition. In this message, I'll look at an overview of Psalm 23, revealing the promises of God that are in plain sight but so often overlooked. In this day and age, we have so much error in the church that many find it difficult to find the truth and where God actually stands when it comes to our daily lives and needs. On the one hand, we have the word of faith, prosperity preachers that make the gospel all about health and wealth and sadly lead many of God's people into the sin of covetousness through greed and the lusts of the flesh. On the other, we have the eternity bunch that preach God is not interested in your daily struggles, needs once in life. He is purely eternity minded. Both are incorrect either leading off the fleshly desires or straight into a cold, dark religious bubble. Now I'll walk you through Psalm 23, revealing the truth of this awesome psalm, bearing in mind for the sake of time, I'll give you brief points, but a person could literally spend hours in it. Although as stated previously, it is used very often at funerals, the vast majority of Psalm 23 is actually a promise of provision to the living, our shepherd Jesus Christ for his sheep. It is however important to note that the promises are reserved for his sheep, Because nowhere in Psalm 23 is Jesus the shepherd of the goats. In Psalm 23 verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Here is the condition stated directly in the first line of the text. If the Lord is your shepherd, then you shall not want. This is not to be taken out of context and placed into a fleshly covetous view. But the following verse 2 begins to reveal the context in which verse 1 is to be used. In verse 2 he says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Here we need to imagine the direct needs of the sheep. Green grass brings both nourishment and rest, surrounded by more than enough. Bear in mind a sheep's only concern is for the day. It looks to the shepherd for daily sustenance. It has no fear of tomorrow. In the text, he makes me to lie down symbolizes rest and the full assurance that whatever is needed, the shepherd will supply. He leads me beside still waters. It's important to understand the nature of a sheep. They are skittish animals and do not like to drink from rough, fast water. Here the shepherd leads to the still water, which is calming and restores strength. Sometimes we tend to wander off and find ourselves in fear next to turbulent waters. In verse 3, it says, He he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. This verse speaks of a salvation through justification, on the path of sanctification until glorification. He guides us in righteousness, restoring our souls in harmony with our Creator. In verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Here we see clearly, That although we belong to him, we will still face things that bring fear. Problems that we believe could destroy us. Sickness, financial, family issues, work, life. But if we know he is with us and for us, no matter what it is, we can have victory over fear. The rod and staff of a shepherd is used when necessary to protect the flock from an enemy. It is important to note that the psalmist being David is still referring here to the living. How do we know? In heaven there is no shadow of death. In verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This verse is profound. The Lord will supply your needs and bless you in the sight of those that scorn you. Those that do not believe in your God will see his hand in your life 
in the midst of the enemy's plan to destroy you, God will provide for you in such a way that it will be undeniable. What the devil means for harm, God can turn for good. And again, there is no enemies in heaven. Therefore, we are still reading for the living. You anoint my head with oil. Anoint, anointing with oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, being marked and set apart. Sealed by the Holy Spirit for salvation, you now belong to Him. My cup runs over. The goodness of God is above and beyond what we could ever hope or imagine. He supplies the need in abundance. Jesus didn't just pay the price, He overpaid. Just to pray and to know that the Creator of the universe hears your prayer is mind-blowing. We do not deserve Him, but He poured out His life for us. In verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Here David looks ahead and knows as long as he continues to walk with the Lord, he will have goodness and mercy following him. The key to this is in the text. As long as you remain his, you are assured of goodness because he loves you. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And here we have it. The psalmist has gone through his life and God has provided provision protection, grace, mercy, and above all, love. Here we see eternity in his words, to dwell in the house of God forever. So although the psalm now ends, it really never does. The psalm encompasses all of life and our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. It does not neglect to mention the hardship and fact that, yes, the shadow of death will be around us at times, but we are to walk through and not to camp in the valley. And as we walk, he is always there. Life is not easy, but God is good. He doesn't promise the Christian a bump free ride, but he does promise to never, ever leave you. Now, a scripture that often reminds me that God cares about our physical needs is in Psalm 27, verse 13. Again, David says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. One thing I've learned through a very, very hard lesson is it's never over till God says so. Sometimes you wait on the Lord and it can be very hard, but He is faithful in spite of our impatience or unbelieving hearts. I hope this brief overview will bring peace to your heart, whatever circumstance you may find yourself in today, be it lying in the field of green grass or walking through the valley, the shepherd never leaves his sheep. In John 10 verse 11, Jesus speaking, He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. This is Barry Hutton for His Infinite Mercy Ministries, preaching the truth of Jesus Christ and exposing the lies of Satan. Amen.